the easy version. Uh, you don't find all Nash equilibrium. You just basically find one Nash equilibrium if this is what the question is asking. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, and this, the sort of the hard version is basically you're finding all Nash equilibria, okay? And and clearly it's it's more difficult because you you need to make a full-fledged uh, analysis. Well, if you're having difficulty answering this type of question, well, there are possibly two reasons. The first one is that you are not fully understanding the uh, the mechanics of Nash equilibrium. And the second one is you don't know how to make a full and complete analysis. Well, well, hopefully this course is going to teach you both. So the first one, the Nash equilibrium, the mechanics of Nash equilibrium. So I repeat this many times, but uh, let me repeat one more time. Uh, although we are analyzing games of simultaneous move games where players are actually choosing their actions without observing their opponent's actions, the concept of Nash equilibrium analyzes game as if the game is over, everybody knows everything, and then they just check whether they had a better response or not, all right? Meaning whether they best responded their opponents or not. So sort of whether they are going to regret their choices or not, okay? So what does that mean? That means whenever you are uh, sort of verifying a strategy profile is in Nash equilibrium or not, you have to let player, just take one player at a time, let him or her know his or her opponent's all actions, and then check whether this player is best responding by choosing that action specified in the strategy profile. And you have to do it for each player. Well, speaking of which, that means if you're checking whether something is Nash equilibrium or not, you have to be looking at a strategy profile, meaning without knowing what the other uh, players are going to do, I mean, without knowing the other players' strategies, you cannot verify if one player is best responding or not. All right, so the full description of strategy profile, meaning strategy for each player, is critical to verify whether uh, this strategy profile is in Nash equilibrium or not. So we don't talk about Nash equilibrium strategy, we talk about Nash equilibrium strategy profile. So we take it as a, the, the entire profile as a whole and then check if it is Nash equilibrium or not, okay? Well, the second thing is like, the, well, the, the, the way we analyze it. So how, how should we approach? Well, simple, in the second price auction, uh, the, the first question at least I asked you was, is there any Nash equilibrium where player one wins? Well, you can just make a wild guess, all right, and then verify it. Um, that's probably the easiest solution, all right? We sometimes call it educated guess. So the more you know about the games, and the more you solve games, probably you are going to have a better sense of making a sort of a better guess. But the thing is, just make a guess, all right? Well, the obvious guess is, if you remember, player one has valuation V and the player one, I'm sorry, the player two has valuation W and we know that V is greater than W, all right? So, I mean, if I were you, my sort of the first guess would be, is this a Nash equilibrium? Meaning player one bids his valuation, player two also bids his valuation. Can I support this as a Nash equilibrium? All right, so that's a guess. Um, well, at this point, what I have to do is the following. Just assume player one knows player two strategy W and then see if he is best responding. Well, so if player two is really bidding W, all right, uh, what would player one's payoff? Well, first of all, I need to understand what would player one's payoff, right? Because in order to say he is best responding or not, meaning can he achieve any better payoff? Well, I need to first find out what his payoff is under the given circumstances. I mean the VW. Well, here, uh, given that player one is overbidding his opponent, meaning V is greater than W, a player one is going to win the uh, auction. And remember, this is a second price auction. So he pays only the second uh, bid, W. So therefore, player one's uh, payoff 
is going to be his valuation, V, minus uh, the bid he pays, W, which we know it's positive. So the question is, can he achieve payoff higher than this? Well, his valuation, remember, so don't forget, in auction theory, the payoff is almost always the valuation of the player minus valuation minus the bid. So the valuation, you can't change it, all right? So sort of we assume it's, it's, it's uh, I mean, each player is born with this valuation, all right? Well, the only thing you may change is the bid. But the thing is, the bid belongs to the second uh, highest bid. I, I mean, in this scenario, there are two players, so therefore it's the losing bid. So you can't change that. W is the second player's bid. Well, you can change it by losing the auction, obviously, but the thing is, if you lose the auction, you're going to get zero payoff, which is less than this anyhow. So for that reason, because you can't change any one of those parameters, player one, I mean, uh, he can't increase his payoff uh, more than that. So therefore, yes, V is in fact a best response to player two beating W, all right? So if you do the same thing from the second player's perspective, well, what is obviously the first thing you should do is what is the payoff of player two? Well, zero, because he lost the auction. Well, uh, can he achieve higher than that? Meaning, can he win this auction? Again, don't forget, given that his opponent is bidding V. Well, he can win the auction if he overbids his opponent, according to the rules. And overbidding means he has to, I mean, player two must bid something more than V. Well, if he wins, what happens is that he will have to pay his, oh, so he's going to get W, all right, because this is his valuation, minus the bid. Well, don't forget, if he wins, player one will lose, so the losing bid is going to be V this time. So V minus W is what player two's payoff will be. Again, if he wins under the circumstances that his opponent bid V. Well, but we know V is greater than W, so this guy is negative. So that means winning the auction under this scenario where your opponent already bid V is not going to improve your payoff. So you should be happy with zero. So you shouldn't regret about your strategy, meaning W is also a best response to player one bidding V. Hence, VW is one of the Nash equilibrium of this game where player one wins, okay?